And this time together we will be taking a journey. And this is a journey into the dimensions and the movements and rhythms of pleasure within your being. And part of the gift of taking this journey is an opportunity for an energetic unraveling of the entanglements or the cross-wiring between guilt and pleasure, pain and pleasure, and shame and pleasure. These three are the most common patterns of cross-wiring that I see in relationship to the embodiment of pleasure and one's capacity to allow in, to claim, to be an expression of greater degrees of embodied pleasure in this life. I'm going to set a little bit of context for this phenomena of cross-wiring, and then we'll enter into a spacious practice together. From the foundation of lack, of not enoughness, there's an inherent patterning that extends into every facet of life. And within this patterning of lack, if one experiences great pleasure, maybe pleasure of ease of living or of freedom with money or freedom of expression or some kind of quality that one's find, that one finds pleasurable, there can also be arising with it an experience of guilt that someone else does not have that or has less of that or doesn't have access to that, etc. And this guilt can be dressed up and disguised as being a dutiful, caring human being for other fellow human beings. But make no mistake, this energy of guilt is part of the patterning of lack itself that's meant to hold things within the pattern of lack. So in this way, the untangling of pleasure from guilt is essential to the continued up-leveling expansion and deepening of roots for all of us in relationship to flow, abundance, pleasure, power. The second one is pain and pleasure. And this one often goes back to family of origin or early childhood dynamics where pleasure may have been experienced and then it was immediately connected to a painful consequence. Don't do that. You shouldn't behave like that. That's wrong. That's bad. Shame on you. Say you're sorry. (laughs) These are all very normalized phenomena in childhood. And yet, they set the foundation for a cross-wiring between pain and pleasure. That for one to experience spontaneous pleasure of being, delight in expression, that coming with it or immediately on its heels will be a painful consequence. This is a very well-worn groove 
in the collective consciousness templating. And so as we begin to feel more or reach for more pleasure in our experience in life, arising with that can be the fear or the anticipatory fear of painful consequences that may be lurking somewhere just around the corner that will surprise you in any moment. This dynamic is also connected to the experience of conditional love, which, of course, we've all had experience with receiving and giving. And to have paired with the expansiveness and the bliss of love, the withholding or the taking back of that expression of love for whatever reason, immediately connects the pleasure of the love and the the pleasure of receiving the love and the pleasure of and the pain of having the love withdrawn or withheld. And the last one that is also well worn within the collective grooves of consciousness is the pairing of shame and pleasure. This one has close ties to religious doctrine and dogma, Puritanism. And inherent in it is a belief that if one is enjoying themselves tremendously, there must be something sinful about it. (laughs) That it must not be okay. It must be gluttonous or lustful or fill in the blank. I giggle because just recently, in the last few days, last week, I was experiencing so much pleasure of being, just existing and being in the location that I'm in, in the way that I'm moving through life, expressing, creating, connecting with others. And I had this moment where my my nervous system flooded with, there must be, I must be doing something wrong. Surely it can't be okay to enjoy this much. And then it went from that into surely I must be missing something. I must be avoiding something or in denial of something because uh, how, how could, how could life be this pleasurable? This isn't okay. That's a, that's a very concrete example of how this has become ingrained within the templating that is the foundation of lack consciousness and of unproductive polarity, which is either oring our experience. It's either this or that. It's black or white. It's right or wrong. It's good or bad. And when we experience these greater degrees of pleasure on any level, Don't be surprised for a shame bomb. That's how I affectionately refer to them, a shame bomb to erupt on the scene, either through an unexpected scenario that plays itself out or just spontaneously within your thinking as you move through your day or your emotive body. So if we know that these phenomena are indeed phenomena, in many ways they are impersonal even though we experience them as personal, then that immediately gives us more space for curiosity, for exploration, to be scientists of our own experience for the sake of creating more and more of the life and the experience of ourselves that we wish that we desire, that we dream of, that we long for in our hearts and in our souls. And because pleasure is so closely connected to desire, and because desire is the magnetic force that calls us both deeper into our true selves and and in deeper relationship to God or to source, It's essential 
that we deepen in our capacity for pleasure as we deepen on spiritual path, as we deepen in our connection to self and source, and as we become more available to be of service in this life through our lived life, through this adventurous journey together. The nature of pleasure is that less and less becomes withheld from the pleasurable experience itself. (laughs) I love this so much about pleasure. If you think about it when you're having just a grand blissful time, the experience is that you aren't reserving pieces and parts of you from the experience. You're giving yourself over to the experience and the pleasure is the result. Let that sink in for a minute. That as you give yourself over to the experience, it's a sort of surrender of self to self and self to unfolding experience. That pleasure is the result. And then To the degree that we immediately activate these cross wirings, guilt and pleasure, pain and pleasure, shame and pleasure, we will withdraw ourselves from the pleasure unfolding and from the experience of being in unity with ourself, in deep intimacy with ourself. Feeling pleasure right now, right now, just feel a yielding of yourself to this experience, to these words, to this moment. And if there's nothing to do or fix or figure out, that the only invitation is to be in the spacious reception of yourself. In the pleasure of receiving yourself. And calling in and on the spirit of Rose, compassionate grace, the one Feeling yourself ensconced in a kind of bubble of bliss. This is the natural bliss of self. Softening in your belly. Relaxing through your face, feeling the pelvis open and vital, and inviting in all of you right now. A sweet union, a sweet and pleasurable union of self to self. And intending here now together and the power of our togetherness. Let this energy of pleasure that is our birthright, 
that is inherently good, true, and beautiful. That any place or space where we might be holding these cross wirings within the body, within the psyche, that they may be touched right now. And that as they are touched, the unraveling happens. It just happens. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. You are free to experience unbridled pleasure and you can trust in the goodness and the sweetness of your being to be in delight with this pleasure and for this delight, this pleasure to be in direct service to you and all beings that you come into contact with that are connected to you in any way. And through this propagation and expansion and deepening of capacity and choice for pleasure, you experience greater and greater freedom of self, of expression, of love, and of rich care all the pieces and parts of you for all of this experience that we call life. Coming into this resting point together of the pleasure of full, grace-filled acceptance of all of it, all of it. Bless your beautiful heart, your tender being, your courageous being. From my heart to yours. Until next time.